Years ago, the entire idea of buying a new car was something that many Americans could justify and afford. And then we blinked. And now it seems as though the new car market is only reserved for the ultra wealthy. New car affordability is the biggest issue plaguing the new car market, and it seems as though every single year new cars are becoming more astronomically expensive. You can see here in this graph provided by Cox Automotive that back in December of 2017, around 200,000 new vehicles were sold for under $25,000, while in that same period of time, around 125,000 new vehicles were sold for over $60,000. In comparison, this past December, December of 2022, the number of vehicles sold that were over $60,000 increased to about 325,000 units. That's a 163% increase, while models sold that were under $25,000 fell to less than 50,000 units, or a 78% decline. These figures are staggering, but how do they compare to overall household income? Well, not great. The median household income in the United States is about $70,000. The average household income pays about 28% in taxes, but this will of course depend on your income, state, marital status, things like that. Which means that the median household income take home pay is about $50,000 400 per year. Basic personal finance principles suggest that you should not be spending more than 20% of your take home pay on a car. This includes not only your monthly car payment, but insurance, gas, maintenance, repairs, everything revolving around your transportation should not cost more than 20%. With this math in mind, the average American shouldn't be spending more than about $840 per month on their car. On average, insurance costs $168 per month for a new car. Fuel costs about $164, and the average maintenance per month for a car comes out to about $99 per month. With the 20% rule and taking into account all of these different miscellaneous expenses that come along with purchasing a car, the average American should spend about $375 per month on their actual car payment. A $25,000 car fits within these parameters quite well, making it a great financial fit for the average American. The problem though is that the average monthly payment for a new car in the United States is $780 per month. That doesn't even include all of the miscellaneous expenses that need to be taken into account on top of that. This is nearly double the recommended amount that you should be paying based off of personal finance principles. In 2017, there were 36 car models with MSRPs below $25,000, and 13% of all new vehicle sales were cars within this category. In 2022, there were only 10 car models with MSRPs below $25,000, and new vehicle sales within this category only accounted for 4% of total vehicle sales. This is something that I've talked about in a number of different videos over the years, because if you look at historical vehicles and the different vehicles that have been available to buyers, there used to be plenty of options out there for the budget buyer from a variety of different manufacturers. In fact, nearly every mainstream manufacturer from Honda to Ford to Toyota had some sort of budget option out there for the budget buyer. There were plenty of of options to choose from if you were somebody that was looking for a car in the $20,000 to $25,000 price range. But today, nearly all of these cars have been discontinued in favor of more expensive, more luxurious, and higher margin cars. And this is a major problem that's going to have massive ramifications for the entire US economy. I mentioned earlier that the median household income in the United States is about $70,000. Over the last 10 years, this has increased by 13%, bringing the household income from 62,000, which is what it was back in 2013, to 70,000, which is what it is today. So our take home income to spend on things like our house, our cars, our groceries, and our entertainment has increased by 13% percent over the last 10 years. But let's compare this to some of our miscellaneous expenses. The cost of a new car in the United States has increased by 50% in the last 10 years and is currently sitting at about $48,000. The cost of a home is $534,000, a 74% increase from 10 years ago. And a normal US family spends about $5,259 per year on food. This is an increase of 31% in the last 10 years. So while food has increased by 31%, housing has increased by 74%, and cars by 50%, our income has only increased by 13%. And yet, in our new very expensive reality, people continue to buy food, houses, and and new cars. So the math just isn't adding up. 
Last year, American auto loan debt rose to $1.52 trillion, to the highest level in history, and currently auto loan debt makes up about 9% of household debt. And sure, auto loan debt isn't the only form of debt that Americans take out. But in many ways, this is one of the more concerning forms of debt because of the fact that auto loan debt is considered to be a want, not a need, and it's also debt on a depreciating asset. Food and shelter are things that we as living humans have to spend money on. And sure, you don't have to spend half a million dollars on a house, but whenever it comes to taking out debt and leveraging debt, a home mortgage is oftentimes and widely considered to be a good form of debt. Vehicle debt, on the other hand, pretty much across the board, is considered to be bad debt because the moment that you buy a new car and you drive that car off of the dealer's lot, that car immediately begins to lose value. So unlike a house, which is considered to be an investment that can be sold if need be, a car is a liability and it is the exact opposite. It costs you money each and every month. And once you go to sell that new car, chances are you're gonna end up having to sell it for much less than what you bought it for. This is especially true given the fact that the car market is crashing and cars across the board are selling for between 10 and 20% less than what they were selling for a year ago. And this is especially concerning as auto loan delinquency rates are rising and are currently sitting at about 1.8%. Meaning of all outstanding auto loans, 1.8% of them are delinquent. But what about these auto loan borrowers who took out loans within the last year or even in the last month? Like I mentioned earlier, the math just simply isn't adding up. When we look at the average American and their financial situation, they simply cannot afford the average house, average car paired with the average cost of food. And yet we continue to see houses and cars sold and people spending astronomical amounts of money. This is a recipe for disaster. We can't ignore basic financial fundamentals and these basic fundamentals are pointing towards the fact that our economy is sitting on a house of cards that is built on a mountain of debt. And the reason why I'm honing in on auto debt specifically in this video is because of the fact that new auto debt is such a frivolous form of debt. We need transportation, but we don't need that in the form of a $75,000 vehicle with massage seats, autopilot, and panoramic sunroofs. And yet we're seeing an increase of this over the top, overpriced vehicle being sold every single day. One thing I think about all the time, nearly every single day, is the question of how do people afford living? Life is so expensive. I make really good money and even I look at people in my age group and I see them buying new cars, buying new houses, going on vacations frequently, and I always have to ask myself the question of how the heck do they afford this? I remember the days that seeing a car that was $100,000 or more, it was like a rare occasion, it was a treat. And it was oftentimes in the form of something like a Lamborghini or some other eye-catching exotic car. But today I drive on the road and I see $100,000 vehicles all the time, every single day, if not multiple times per trip. As I've gotten older and I've come to realize how much things cost and how much people make, I've come to the conclusion that people are just in a massive amount of debt. Or alternatively, people are just in a rotation of taking out new debt constantly in order to buy the things that they want to buy. Both of those scenarios aren't good. I predict that in the future, and I'm not sure when, but sometime in the next few years, we will see this debt situation spiral out of control, and it will be fueled by new car loans, but accompanied by other forms of debt, including mortgage debt, credit cards, and more. Based on the average figures that we talked about earlier, as well as taking into account basic personal finance fundamentals, in order for a family to be able to afford a typical house and a typical new car today, they would need to have a median household take-home pay of $10,500 per month, which equates to $126,000 per year, which means that they would have to have a pre-tax income of $161,280 which means that for the typical income to be more in line with the typical cost of a house and a new car here in the United States, we would have to see that median household income increase by over 130%, which I think we can all agree isn't going to happen. The math simply isn't adding up, and for every dollar that Americans borrow, they are simply kicking the can further and further down the road, but they can't kick the can forever. Eventually, this mountain of debt is going to catch up to all of us, and once that happens, it is going to be an absolute disaster. But like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it, so make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the